Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about continuity and uh, the concept of continuity and what it means. Uh, let's start talking about continuity by just drawing a graph. And uh, I'm going to start out by talking about, I guess I could call it the layman's version of continuity, uh, just the way you can think about it in your head, but this isn't really what continuity means, but it's a way to think about it. And one way of thinking about continuity is, can I draw this function f of x? When I draw it, do I have to pick up my pen or not? And if I have to pick up my pen while drawing it, then there's some sort of a discontinuity going on on that function. In this case, I can draw this whole function without lifting my pen. And so in some sense, we might think of this as a continuous function. Okay, an example of something that, uh, so this thing's continuous. And here would be an example of a function over here where maybe I'm going along all of a sudden there's a hole in the function, and at this point, maybe I call this the point C, at the point C, this thing is not continuous. So not continuous at x is equal to C. Okay, so this is a continuous function. I don't have to lift my pen. Here I would have to actually pick my pen up, put it back down on the other side, and keep drawing, so this is not continuous at the point C. And that's just a basic way we can start thinking about what continuity means. But now let's actually write down some definitions and see what the actual meaning is of continuity. All right, now we're ready to talk about what the actual definition of continuity is. Um, the definition of continuity is that a function, y equals f of x, is continuous at an interior point C of its domain if the limit as x goes to C of f of x is f of C. And we've already seen some functions that behave this way. Polynomials always have this property. Uh, if a trig function exists at a point, it has this property. So this is uh, polynomial functions are continuous at points in their domain, trig functions are continuous at points in their domain, but any time that the limit value of the function is equal to the functional value at the point, in other words, the graph lines up and things are exactly where you expect them to be, so the function's going along, and let's take a point C, and the functional value at C is also the same as the limit value at C, then we say that that's the function is continuous at that point C. Okay, another definition is what does it mean to be continuous at an endpoint? Not all functions go on forever. Some do have endpoints. A good example would be like a semicircle. A semicircle doesn't move beyond the point, like let's say that this is one and this is negative one. So uh, if I'm out here at 1, what does it mean to be continuous at this point um, at x equals 1? Well, in this case, it just means I, I don't have a right hand and a left hand limit to compare it to. I just have a left hand limit, so just take the left hand limit. And that's exactly what it's saying right here. And also, if I'm asking is it continuous at this endpoint, I just take a right hand limit. So if you don't have a right hand and a left hand, limit both to say it's continuous at a nice interior point, meaning that you have limits from both sides, uh, then you can just ask, well, what does it have a right hand or a left hand limit? If that matches up, then we say it's continuous at that endpoint. Okay, so this is the formal mathematical definition of continuity, is that the limit of the function is equal to the functional value at that point C. Another definition, uh, if a function is not continuous at a point C, then we say that F is discontinuous at C, and that C is a point of discontinuity. So if there is some point where uh, the limit of the function is not equal to the functional value, then uh, we have 
what we call a discontinuity or a point of discontinuity. Um, now, how do you figure out if a function is continuous at a point C? Okay, so if we're testing for continuity at a point C, then really there's three things you can test. And you could test it in this order, you can test it in any order you want to, but I think that this is the way that makes the most sense. And if you're trying to see, okay, is this function continuous at the point C? First, you ask the question, does the functional value exist at C? If it does, great. If it doesn't, you're done and it's not continuous, okay? So if any of these things are not true, it's not continuous. So if there is no functional value, not continuous at C. Does it have a limit as X approaches C? And remember that's different from the functional value. So does it have a limit value at C? If no, it's not continuous. If yes, move on to the third. And that is, is the functional value and the limit value, are those the same thing? If they are, then it's continuous. If they're not the same thing, uh, it, it is possible that it has a functional value, it has a limit value, but they're not the same. And if they're not the same, it's also not continuous. So these are the three questions that have to be answered yes for a point to be continuous on a function. Two more quick definitions to share with you. Uh, first, we have that a function is a continuous on an interval if it's continuous at every point on that interval. So we could say like, uh, is a function continuous on the interval from zero to one? So maybe we have this function and it's doing something over here, maybe it jumps, maybe it's moving along, and from zero to one, we could say, is it continuous? And we can see over this interval right here, it's a nice continuous function. All of these points are continuous. So we would say that this function is in fact continuous on the interval. If we asked, is it continuous on this interval, it would not be because we see at this point, the functional value and the limit value are not the same thing. In fact, it doesn't have a limit at this point back here. Okay, so uh, we understand what continuous on an interval means. It means it's continuous at every point inside that interval. And then another definition we have is that a continuous function, um, a continuous function is a function that is continuous on every point in its domain. And that's a very important part here is that it's continuous at every point in its domain. I almost think that this is kind of like one of those tricky pieces in math where mathematicians are just trying to mess with you a little bit. Uh, my classic example here of a continuous function is the following. Uh, let's say that we have the function f of x is equal to one over x. And one over x looks like this. That's f of x equals one over x. And the question is, is this function a continuous function? And a lot of times the answer that students give to this is, well, no, it's not a continuous function. Look at zero. At zero, it's just a big fat mess. In fact, it doesn't even have a functional value at all at zero. But wait. What is the definition of a continuous function? It's a function that's continuous at every point in its domain. In its domain, so a point has to be in the domain of the function in order to be considered to be a continuous function. Well, every point in its domain, what is in this function's domain? Well, every value except zero is in this domain. Is it continuous at all those points? Yes, and so we would say that f of x equals one over x is a continuous function. It's a continuous function because it's continuous at every point in its domain. Now, if I asked you the question on this function, is this function continuous at zero? The answer is no. Is it a continuous function? Yes, it is because it's continuous at every point in the domain. All right, let's uh, look at a theorem and talk about the properties of continuous functions. Um, and 
What this theorem tells us is if we have two functions, f and g, and they're both continuous at a point c, all right, so they're both nice uh, continuous functions at c, then the following are true. That f plus g, f minus g, f times g, uh, k times f, where k is some real number like 3 or pi, any constant times f, f divided by g, uh, provided that f of c is not zero, I'm sorry, that g of c is not zero, and f to the k, all of these different new functions that we could make out of the functions f and g, those are all also continuous at x equals c. So in other words, if you have two functions and they're both continuous at a point c, then the sum of those functions is continuous at the point c. And if you have two functions that are continuous at c, then the product of those two functions is continuous at c. So all of these uh, properties of continuous functions we can now use and understand that when I multiply continuous functions, I get a continuous function. When I multiply a continuous function by a constant, I still have a continuous function. And this is going to be helpful to us later. Our next theorem states that if f is continuous at c and g is continuous at f of c, then the composite function f com I'm sorry, g composed with f is continuous at c. All right, so we can also talk about the composition of two functions being continuous as long as, in this case, they are not both continuous at c. f is continuous at c and uh, g is continuous at f of c. Then we can talk about the composition of two functions being continuous. And then finally, uh, we can talk about the intermediate value theorem, which uh, Any time that there's a theorem that's named in calculus, you can be pretty sure it's pretty important, and this one is. And what the intermediate value theorem says is that if we have some function, f of x, that's continuous on a closed interval, and it has to be a closed interval, then it takes on every value between f of a and f of b. In other words, if you have some value, y0, in between f of a and f of b, then y must be equal to f of c for some c in the interval from a to b. And I think that the easiest way to talk about the intermediate value theorem is just to draw a picture, because what it's saying here is not uh, hard to understand at all. So what the intermediate value theorem, said, uh, theorem says is, let's say that we have a and b, and then we have some functional value for a, and we have some functional value for b. And let's say that I s tell you there's a function, and that function is continuous. It starts at this point, it ends at this point, and for the sake of argument, we don't lift our pin. If I have to get from this point to this point, and I can't pick up my pen uh, or have any discontinuities, then how can I do it without getting passing through all of these y values? Well, the answer is I can't, and that's what the intermediate value theorem says. So maybe it does something like this, but now choose any value between f of a, which is up here, and f of b, which is down here, um, and let's just call it y0. Then there was some value c, so that f of c was y0. So if you choose any value between f of a and f of b, any y value, then there is going to be an x value c such that f of c is going to give you that y value. And that's what the intermediate value theorem tells us. Okay, now we're ready to look at some problems and see how uh, this applies to homework.